March the 8th, 1947, the 7,000 tonne Greek ship Ira, bound for Antwerp from the US, with 4,000 tonnes of coal on board, ran aground on the Goodwins in the early morning. 34 crew were taken off by the lifeboat and the vessel broke her back. One of the heavy derricks fell down and showered the lifeboat with metal. On June the 6th, hundreds of porpoises were seen off Dill. Complaints of heavy explosions in the Downs when wrecks were being disposed of were causing damage to properties ashore. On June the 10th, salvage operations are finally completed on the forepart of the Helena Majeska and she has been towed away to the Blackwater. After frequent requests for immediate removal of the pier wreckage, the Minister of Transport said it did not constitute a navigational danger. On August the 4th, 1948, Jim Clark went for a row in Tom Upton's sculler and ran foul of the piles at the head of the pier and lost both oars. A shout of help was heard by Dickie Lill and W. Williams who launched the Lancashire Lass with a spare set of skulls. August the 8th, the Carefree was built by W. Shilton at the rear of 117 High Street. On August the 16th, the Royal Navy party from Hythe towed in a sea mine and rendered it harmless. September the 3rd, the Dill Regatta was revived. It was brilliant weather this Wednesday, although a fresh northerly wind was blowing. Thursday, September the 4th, the day started hazy with no wind, but it freshened up from the north during the day. Ben Bailey won the one oared race in the Lancashire Lass. Fred Upton coming second. Ben Bailey was unplaced in the rescue race. Tuesday, September the 9th, we launched the lifeboat to the yacht Annulet, which was in trouble off St Margaret's with torn sails and engine failure. She was towed to Ramsgate. During the summer, divers salvaged lead ingots from the northeastern Victory, the first time divers had ever been used. Silt had to be blasted out with compressed air each time so they could reach the 100 pound ingots. Work started on this in April. Friday, January the 2nd, 1948, the 2,327 tonne Italian steamer Silvia Oronata was bound from Rijeka in Yugoslavia to Rotterdam carrying 2,933 tonnes of plumbago. She was spotted aground at 2.50pm by the Coast Guard when the fog, li fog lifted. The maroons were fired and caused pandemonium among the local spratters who buoyed their nets and hurried ashore, leaving other boatmen to recover the nets. The lifeboat launched at 3.20pm, nine minutes after authorisation. We had to steam through a terrible mile of broken water on the good winds to reach the ship with seas reaching a height of some 40 feet. We couldn't stop alongside the ship and we were rising well above her bridge height on the huge seas. We struck a glancing blow on her deck on one occasion. The vessel broke her back on Tuesday the 13th of January 1948. The severe gales never gave any chance of recovery. All the crew were saved. Sunday, January the 25th, the lifeboat was launched to an unknown steamer. She was reported by the lightship which said she had run aground in heavy seas with a southeast gale blowing. We launched at 11.20 a.m. and returned at 2.30 p.m. It is assumed the ship slid off the sands and continued her journey as no trace was found. August Bank Holiday 1948. The motor yacht Grey Mist anchored off Deal. She was the first ship to evacuate troops during the war from Boulogne. 300 were transported across the channel by B. Bailey, F. Russell, H. Pitcher and A. Amble. August the 3rd, the lifeboat searched for the boat Jordanks, which had gone missing and was owned by Ebmere, a fish and chip man. They were eventually found in Calais. Owing to the heavy seas and drizzle, the tripping boats didn't work during the regatta. The results of the races were the one oared punt race, first was Ben Bailey, second Fred Upton and third J. Budd. In the single sculler race, first was W. Kennedy, in the seashell and second Ben in the Ben. Sunday, August the 29th, we accompany Tom Blower's swim to France in Fred Upton's Rose Marie and accompanying boat, the Sunbeam. The rescue race started. The Undaunted was leading the race to the bank boy, but our boys with skipper F. Roberts got ahead. The wind was stormy from the southwest. Friday, November the 26th. It was stated in the recent Dill Council's meeting report that the entire council were just getting into their stride with regard to the beach plot charges, as they thought that the boatmen and burgesses would be satisfied with the new proposals. I'd like to inform the local people of my views, which I know are shared by all fishermen. We feel that we are being tricked into paying by being offered a little bait 
from a former 30% rebate with a time limit of 13 days in which to pay. There is nothing to say that in the future years this emission will not be withdrawn. This is not nearly a question of money and I personally don't feel inclined to give the council £20 a year and get absolutely nothing for it. We got no protection or help and any Tom, Dick or Harry can set up in opposition. A big item to consider is the amount of damage which is done to the boats being bashed up along the shore and having to be hove over banks as high as 10 feet. The bills for broken planks, timbers and kills run into several pounds a year. Yet, if we were working from a harbour, we would get no damage of this kind. The entertainment committee should know better than anybody else the difficulty of making things pay in our short season of two months. Let them add two pound for every 10 foot that they occupy and see how it would help expenses along. What we have not thrashed out yet is the reason why they should make us pay at all. If anyone would care to look along the beach on the seaward side of the road, south of the mansion at Warmer, they will see the foundations for some houses. This case was fought as it was found that the beach was the fishermen's. They had been drying the nets there for hundreds of years and it was theirs by hereditary right. I am convinced that if the present case was fought the same thing would be proven about the beach that we occupy today. We would be willing to pay a nominal sum each year for the damage that we do to the parade when we have to save our boats from the sea and also for keeping the beach clean. I am convinced that there are no other reasons whatsoever why we should have to pay these extortionate Jews. Yours truly, Ben Bailey. The written memoirs in this film have been read as Ben Bailey wrote them all those years ago.